Hello there again. Uh, basically now everything is stripped off except for the crank. I need to take it out now. Here you would see that the crank has eaten up three of the main bearings white metal here. So as you will see this is the oil pump side. It has a kink over here. This is the second one which is kinked from center a bit to the, let's see if it's upright, so it's on the uh, right hand side in this one. This is a bit more to the right now, we're not on the center anymore, like so. And from here on out, it's all on the right, as you will see here. But mostly this damage was due to the flywheel, because as you can see, this is the section where the flywheel sits, and the damage was uh, all from coming from here. Well, this was just being supported, the first one. The center were taking the, the load, but the flywheel did all the damage here. That wouldn't have lasted much more on mileage with this kind of bearing. And now I will be taking the pistons out, first the shells out of the conrod. Um, and after that, I will try to uh, pull the crank and see what's happening underneath because I need to see the big end shells as well. Now, as a small trick you should use when trying to prise out a bolt, uh, never attach it and just pull it. Because when you'll be doing, if you'll be pulling it like this from the arm, you put all your strength on it, you might bend the head of the bolt and you could easily damage it beyond repair. So, the best way is to keep it straight, keep your arm straight, and you just let go with all your weight. Because like so, you can control easily. With it being pulled out like so, with my arm all, all uh, extended, I can just let loose and use all the weight of my upper body. Now, here we have the pistons and during the disassemble, the connecting rod over here, for example, take this one. Take this one off, and it has no number on the other side, just on one side. So that makes it easy to see. So, but as regards to white metal here, it's pretty neat. I clean it up for you to see. As you can see, this one is pretty neat. So we have no sign of problems. Now, as I previously mentioned before, uh, here I have me the so-called lip seal. It has these springs on the inside, here, as you can see. And here we have the lip. This one over here is a lip, and the one on the other end, here, is the dust cover, which, as you can see, it's been a bit bent. You see, there, on this end, 
we have a king which I definitely did not give it so uh, basically the lip is all flattened it has no actual lip on it but and it was also leaking but the rest of the crank seems pretty good I'll show you here let's see here we have a very very smooth surface but here there are slight markings now crank out and there we go now, here one of the pistons as soon as I pushed it slightly it went out so as you can see uh, some dirt has been gathering on the sides on to the next part uh, basically it's all about labeling now uh, so I'll be doing a small sketch just to mark from which piston will be taken so I'll be just drawing a, squ a quick layout of the engine like so That's about it. I have me each piston labeled. This one is labeled four, five, six, three, two, one. Those are my labelings, so I'm not get confused with anyone else. And I will be phrasing them out, and placing them in bags, and all of them in one container. And in each this in so this will be placed somewhere else so not to be uh, uh, contaminated with oil and I will lose the ink so the next trick is this take one of these piece of plastic usually find found in ice creams and just cut numbers out For each piston I will place one of these in them for me to know which piston is which. Uh, basically because if I write a note and place it in the piston with the oil I'll place it will be disintegrated. So have me this legend here which will notify me which piston is of which and where it should be placed. For example if I have the one it should be placed first part of the block and so on and so forth. So, I will be making a better one later on, and for now, that's just about it. Next section is for me to take them all out.
is a very, very new discovery. The clearance from the ring is at maximum 0.4 plus 0.65 and from here as you can see here this thickness from here according to specifications we can clearly see that the rings here this engine is a 0 0.4 millimeter plus 0.65 and the when I when you use the feeler gauge it was already 0.63 we have a lot a lot of free play with the gauging pin there's a lot of free play on each piston and this shows that the gauging pin onto the piston head is total so this thing was gonna punch me a really really huge hole in the image board and also the uh, white metal is eaten away you can see the discoloration only on this piston this is due to being the closest to the flywheel that's being the flywheel being bent it was wiggling about so this one was the first to go the next item is to take these out and then following them I would take the studs out in the same manner just two nuts here on the bolt and I would just prise them out by locking them onto each other just pulling them out slowly